The following program is provided by Renew Your Mind Ministries. Welcome to Renewing Your Mind with the Word of God radio program, an in-depth study of the Word of God. The program name is from Romans 12, 2, which says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome back to Renewing Your Mind with the Word of God radio program, where we take a verse by verse, chapter by chapter study of the Word of God. And we're currently in the book of John in the New Testament. We are in chapter three. You can, before I move any further, I just want to remind you that you can hear the program on each Tuesday from 9.30 a.m. to 10. And also you can catch any past episodes at our website at www.rymm.cc. So if you miss chapter one, chapter two, or the beginning of chapter three, you can always go to the website at rymm.cc dot cc and listen to any of those prior programs and get caught up and as i was stating we are in the new testament we are in john and we are in chapter three now last week we did verses 10 through 17 particularly focusing on the most famous or at least the most quoted verse out of the Bible for God so loved the world that he gave his only his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting or eternal life which is John 316 which I stated in the last program is the core of Christianity that Jesus came father God sent his son Jesus to die for our sins and that Father God raised him from the dead because he was perfect. He was a perfect sin offering and therefore death could not keep him. And for those of us who believe and confess that Jesus died for our sins, that we're sinners and Jesus died for our sins, that we shall be saved and shall enter into our heavenly father's kingdom. And on last week, And in explaining that, I said that we're all going to die. And the Holy Spirit told me to clarify that. Because in one breath, I was saying that we're going to live forever. And then seemingly seemingly in the next breath, I was saying that we're all going to die. And the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me to correct that. So I'm going to spend this episode explaining or trying to clarify that statement that we're all going to die in the context that the believers will live forever because I think there's some confusion there and so and we may not get to the the chapters or the remaining verses that I wanted to get to this program but I I'm trying to be obedient to the Holy Spirit and clarify what I mean about we're all going to die and more specifically what does it mean to what happens to a believer once his body or her body dies. But before we get into that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for being our God. You are an awesome God, a God of love, a God of grace, a God of mercy. We thank you for your love and your mercy and grace that you have provided to us by sending your only begotten son, Jesus to die for our sins. And so, Lord, we just thank you for this program. We ask you to bless it and open up our minds and open up our hearts and open up our eyes to better receive and understand your word. And the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And so what I'm going to look at or talk about this program is not in John 3, but again, I want to delve into what happens to a believer once they die. And I think that will clarify my statement that we all going to die. And at the same time, believers are going to live. I said this in a, in a prior program that man is a three-part being. Man is a spirit that lives in a body and has a soul. And we find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 
verse 23. So we get that from the word of God. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, we're going to read. And I encourage you to get your Bible uh, and read it with me. And as I always say, read the word of God, study the word of God and do it with others. Listen to the program with others. Read the word of God with others. Study the word of God with others. Our Christian walk should not be a walk that we take by ourselves. God in his word says it's not good for man to be alone. He wasn't just talking about a mate. He was talking about in our social aspect as well. When we get ready to study the word of God and read the word of God and praise God, we should do that with other believers. So I encourage you to read and study the word of God with other people. But going back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, which reads, And the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly, and may your spirit and your soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we get from the word of God that what? We are a spirit. We have a soul that lives in a body. So let's talk about the spirit man. Man is a spirit. First, God is a spirit. John 4, 24 tells us that. And let's look at that. John 4, 24 out of the New Testament, which reads, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. So we begin that our creator is a spirit. So when he created us, when he originally created us, he gave us a part of his spirit. He made us after him. And we get that from looking at in Genesis in the Old Testament, chapter two, verse seven. So when God blew his breath of life into Adam, he blew his spirit into his body. And that is what made Adam's body come alive. Because let's go to Genesis chapter two, verse seven, which reads, then the Lord God formed a man from the dusk of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. So we see in the very beginning that God, unlike the other creatures that he made when he just spoke them into existence, he took his time with man and formed a body for that man, Adam, for us. But until he breathed the breath of life or his spirit into that body, it was just an empty vessel. But once he breathed his the spirit of life into it, he breathed a spirit into Adam. And that is what made the body become alive because he put the spirit into him. John 3, 6 tells us that the spirit gives birth to spirit. That is why God said in Genesis 1, 27, and let's read that. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So what Genesis 1, 27 is telling us is that we were created in his image because he gave us his spirit. No other creature that he made, one, he formed, he just spoke them into existence, and then two, that he breathed his spirit into them. And that spirit he breathed was a, is what we are, that spirit. Not only was our spirit made by God and for God, but our spirit also has, has given us the ability to contact, receive, and worship God. So when John 4, 24 tells us God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. We worship him with our spirit because he's a spirit and he's given us his spirit. We are a part of his spirit. No other creatures was created with God's spirit within them. So one man is a spirit. Two, our spirit lives in a body. Man's spirit 
lives in the physical body and through the body man experiences the things in the physical realm because there are two realms there is a spiritual realm that we cannot see in which God operates and angels and demonic spirits and then we have which operate in the spiritual world and then we have the physical world in which we live in and through our body five senses of the touch sight hearing smell and taste the spirit man interacts with the physical world through the physical body while the spirit is unseen we can't see our spirit the body is the most outward and visible part of our being finally or the third part of man and when I any time I say man naturally I'm talking about all human beings both male and female but man has a soul the soul of a man is his mind emotions and personality since our soul is composed of our mind it enables us to think reason consider remember wonder since our soul consists of our emotions it enables us to have feelings like happiness sorrow anger relief compassion and our will the soul consists of our will which enable us to choose and make decisions and we find that in God's word as well when you look at Psalms 139 verse 14 and let's look at that Psalms 139 14 says my soul knows it is well since to know is a matter of the mind this proves that the mind must be part of the soul let's look at another verse lamentations 3 20 let's go there lamentations 3 20 in the old testament my soul remembers them well indicating that the soul can remember things and then finally in isaiah 61 10 isaiah 61 10 my soul rejoices in my god emotion so again man is a three-part being we are a spirit that lives in a body and possess a soul which consists of our minds emotions and personality now i said that to lay the foundational work of what happens after we die so we have to go back and look how this all began with adam because death flowed from adam's sin his disobedience to god that's when death was introduced into the world god did not make us to die but because of our disobedience and because we serve a holy righteous god death is the penalty for our sin and disobedience to god so let's look at what happened when adam disobeyed god in sin and death was introduced into the world adam existed by god's breath of life which we just talked about that god breathed life into adam gave him his spirit After Adam disobeyed God by eating of the tree of good and evil, after God told him not to do so, this led to a spiritual death of mankind as God told him or them, because Eve was there, it would. God told them, if you eat, disobey me and eat of the tree of good and evil, you shall die. And when he did, his spirit died. His physical body and his soul continue to live. But ultimately, the death of his spirit gradually spread to the realm of his body and eventually his body died. Adam was never meant his body. His physical body was never meant to die. It was built by God to live forever. But the penalty of his sin was that first his spirit died. And then eventually that spiritual left 
ultimately start causing the physical body to die. I think Adam died. He was over 900 years old. And ever since that day, our lifespan has decreased to where it is now. When you look into the uh, read the Old Testament, people were living 900, 800, 500 years. And now if you live to be 70 or 80, you consider to be blessed. But one, you start with the fact that we were never intended to die. And then ever since sin was introduced into the world via Adam, the physical body of man has died. So what happens when a believer's, a believer's body dies? Paul, the apostle Paul, who wrote two thirds of the New Testaments, if the Lord say the same that we would get into. He specifically address the matter of what happens to believers between the time they die and when Christ return. So when I said people are dying, yes, our physical bodies are dying. But as a believer, your spiritual, your spirit, the true man, this is what we're going to talk about. He goes to be with God in heaven until Jesus returns, because Jesus is going to return to this earth one day. And the spirit will be reunited with a better body, a glorified body. And so I just gave a summary of what we're going to break down in these next couple of verses. But that's what happens when as a believer, your spirit immediately goes to God in heaven. The body dies and start to decay from dust to dust. But when Jesus returns, the believer is going to, the spirit of the believer and his soul is going to be reunited with his glorified body. Just like when Christ, when Christ was resurrected, he was resurrected with a glorified body. And us believers, we will have a glorified body as well. But going back to the point of the spirit, remember Jesus, when we were talking about early in this chapter that. Jesus said in order to inherit the kingdom of God, you have to be born of the spirit. That's what he was talking about. We have to have a new birth of our spirit. Going back to what he originally intended, that our spirit would be in tune with our father who is a spirit. And that once you would become a believer, that spirit never dies. This fleshly body dies. And then the spirit again goes immediately to heaven. And so let's look at that. According to... Second Corinthians 5, 8, Paul teaches that at the moment of a believer's death, we immediately enter into the presence of the Lord. So let's look at Second Corinthians 5, 8. Let's go there. And I encourage you to go there with me. It's always good to read the word of God. And what I want to do, I'm going to read that Second Corinthians which is found in the New Testament, chapter 5, verse 8. I'm going to read that verse, but I want to go back to verse number, I think the first verse, because it talks about the death and what kind of bodies that we're going to have. But it says, we, verse number 8 says, we are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. And what Paul is saying here is that when we're away from our body, when I mean, the spirit leaves the body, the body died, is dead. Then that spirit goes home to be with the Lord. But let's go back to look at number in Second Corinthians chapter five. Let's read that first verse. Let's read that whole thing, because I think that's important to read because it discuss it's discussing the very thing that we're discussing now. And I'm going to be reading this from the one Second Corinthians Chapter five verses, we're going to read verses one through eight to put it in context because it addresses what we're talking about, what happens once we die and being reunified uh, with our glorified body. And I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible, which says, for we know that if the earthly tent, which is talking about our physical body, which is our house, is torn down through death. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Verse two, 
For indeed in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our immortal, eternal, celestial dwelling, so that by putting it on we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan, and being burdened, often weighed down and oppressed, not that we want to be unclothed, that is, separated by death from the body, but to be clothed, so that what is mortal, the body that we're in now, because it will die, will be swallowed up by life after the resurrection. Now he who has made us and prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us the Holy Spirit as a pledge, a guarantee, a down payment on the fulfillment of his promise. So then, being always filled with good courage and confident and hope, and knowing that we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So what he's saying here, knowing that we are at home in the body, as long as the spirit is in this body, we cannot be in the spiritual world with the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promise. And then verse eight, we are, as I was saying, as Paul was saying, of good courage and confident hope and prefer rather not to and prefer rather to be present, absent from the body and be at home with the Lord. So he's saying two things. He was saying as long as we're in this body, our spirit man would be in the physical world on this earth. But then once the believer, because Paul was writing this to believers, once the body, this physical body that dies, our spirit continued to live in heaven with the Lord. Paul also spoke of how he desired to part and be with Christ, for that is far better. In Philippians, the first chapter, verse 23, when we die, we are immediately with Christ and enter into the presence of God. So what happens when a believer die? We immediately enter the glorious presence of our Lord, where we await the resurrection of our bodies at the end of the age. And so what's going to happen, God's word talks about in, in prophecy, particularly in the book of Revelation, which I am eventually going to start a verse by verse study of the book of Revelation, especially during this time. God, from the very beginning, from Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation, he's given us prophecies of what's going to happen. In Genesis, he gave us a prophecy that his son Jesus is going to defeat the snake, the serpent that tricked Adam and Eve. And he also gives us signs and indications of when his son Jesus is going to return to this earth to establish his kingdom. And you f find a lot of those signs in the book of Revelation. And God has put in my spirit to do a, while we're still doing the current John and other books, but at the same time, eventually be doing side by side a verse by verse chapter by chapter look in the book of Revelation, because especially in this time of pandemics and wars and all the stuff that's going on in the world, we need to be looking at God's word and seeing what he has revealed to us of what these things that are to come before his son comes. Because he, he tells us when you read the book of Revelation, you are blessed. He says, and look at this in Revelation chapter one, verse three, blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart what is written in it because the time is near so we shouldn't be afraid of the book of revelation we should embrace it we should do what our god says we should read it we should hear it and we'll be blessed because he's telling us before he comes back, these things are going to come to pass. And we're going to look at those things. If God says the same, which I believe he is, he's put it in my spirit to say, to do so. But going back to what I was saying, at the end age, when Jesus returns, the believers is going to return with him and our spirits will be united 
we reunited with our better glorified bodies that ultimately that body will never die. It would never get sick. It would never experience death because at the end, Jesus is going to destroy death. All right, but let's look at this resurrection of the body because God's word, he, he's revealed a lot to us in his word. And he tells us about this resurrected body. And Paul tells us about it specifically in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35 through 49. Paul gives us a remarkable description of the complete transformation that takes place when Christ returns and we're raised in our glorified body. So let's look at 1 Corinthians, which is in the New Testament, chapter 15, verse 35 through 49, verses 35 through 49, where Paul in God's word tells us about these resurrected bodies. And I'm going to be reading from the contemporary English version of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35 through 58, where God's word tells us about these resurrected bodies, starting with verse number 35. Some of you have asked, and again, as I said in the previous episodes, the New Testaments are consist of letters. We call them books, but these were letters that mostly Paul wrote to this new Christian church because after Jesus dies, his disciples, as he told them to do, would go throughout the earth preaching and teaching the word of God or preaching and teaching that Jesus came to die for their sins. And so when this new, what we would call religion, Christianity, was getting off the ground, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have TVs, and so how they communicated was through letters. And so Paul wrote these letters to these various churches that he established, explaining things to them, answering questions. And here, there was questions about you know, life after death, resurrection body. So that's where in verse number 35, that's what he was saying. Some of you, so he's writing this to believers now. Some of you have asked, how will the dead be raised to life? What kind of bodies will they have? Verse 36. Don't be foolish, Paul says. A seed must die before it can sprout from the ground. Wheat seeds and all other seeds look different from the sprouts that come up. This is because God gives everything the kind of body he wants it to have. Verse 39. People, animals, birds, fish are all each made of flesh, but none of them are alike. Verse 40, everything in the heavens has a body, and so does everything on earth, but each one is very different from all the others. The sun isn't like the moon, the moon isn't like the stars, and each star is different. Verse 42, that's how it, it will be when our bodies are raised to life. These bodies will die. And what he was referring to, these bodies, the bodies that he was in then and we are in now, the flesh. But the bodies that are raised will live forever, the glorified bodies. These, 43, these ugly and weak bodies will become beautiful and strong because they're ugly, they're weak, they die, they get sick. But he said they will become beautiful and strong. But that's, what the, that's why they often refer to as glorified bodies, just like Jesus' body was that would never die, that would never get sick. It would be a better version of what we have now. Verse 44, as surely as there are physical bodies, there are spiritual bodies, and our physical bodies will be changed into spiritual bodies, referring to the glorified bodies. Verse 45, the first man was named Adam, and the scriptures tells us that he was a living person, but Jesus who may be called the last item, Adam, is a life-giving spirit, just like they were in the beginning when he breathed life into Adam. Verse 46, we see that the one with a spiritual body did not come first. He came after the one who had the physical body, referring to Jesus. The first man was made from the dust of the earth, but the second man, referring to Jesus, came from heaven. Remember we talked about Jesus saying, no one ascends into heaven, but the one who descended, referring to himself, same thing and referring to here. Verse 48, everyone on earth has a body like the body of the one who was made from the dust of the earth, meaning everybody flowed from Adam, the flesh from the flesh. And 
Everyone in heaven has a body like the body of the one who came from heaven, referring to Jesus. They have glorified bodies up there, and we are going to have one too. Just as we are like the one who was made out of the earth, we will be like the one who came from heaven, saying we're going to be just like Jesus. We're going to have a glorified body just like him that's never going to die, that's never going to get sick. 50. My friends, I want you to know that our bodies of flesh and blood will decay, which we already know. I don't think anybody disputes that the body dies and it eventually decays. This means that they cannot share in God's kingdom, which lasts forever. These fleshly bodies can, the kingdom of God is going to last forever. These fleshly bodies cannot enter into the kingdom because they don't last forever. Verse 51, I will explain a mystery to you. Not every one of us will die. But we will all be changed. It will happen suddenly, quicker than the blink of an eye. At the sound of the last trumpet, the dead will be raised. We will all be changed so that we will never die again. Our dead and decaying bodies will be changed into bodies that won't die or decay. The bodies, verse 54, the bodies we now have are weak and can die. But they will be changed into bodies that are eternal. Amen and amen. And once we get into the book of Revelation, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, a lot of we're going to go into a lot of details about this because God gives us a lot of revelation and we need to heed that revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's what's going to happen, that our spirit man for the believers never dies. It immediately upon the death of this body immediately goes to be in the presence of the Lord in heaven. Once Jesus would turn, our spirit would be reunited with a better body, our glorified bodies, which will live forever. See, God intended for the spirit to live in a body. And so he's going to, this body was defiled by the sins of Adam. So he's going to give us a body that was made by him that won't sin, that won't die, that won't get, won't get sick. So I just wanted to use this episode to explain when I said we're all going to die. Yeah, this fleshly body is going to die, but our spirit as believers will live on in a glorified body. Well, that's our program. That's all the time we have for this program. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for your son sending him Jesus to die for our sins that we may have a new birth of the spirit that will live forever and also be reunified upon the coming returning or the second return of your son to a glorified body so we thank you for that lord we thank you we worship you we give you all the honor we give you all the praise in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen <laughs>